Hi, and welcome to part three of the three-part series on symbolic examples. I'm going to change things up in just a second. You'll see what I mean by this. But uh, these these examples we're going to do in this in this part are, I think, examples that you really understand what's going on if you can if you can under, you, know, you can follow through what I'm doing here and you can do these sorts of problems. Uh, they're not the types of problems that I've seen on uh, the FM exam, actuarial exam, but they are very helpful in helping you understand, um, you know, symbolically what's going on with the representations of, of these annuities. So let's just get right to the example one. So instead of giving you a timeline and asking you to give me a representation of the value of the annuity at, at, a, at a given valua valuation date, I'm going to turn it around and ask you to draw the timeline. So let's draw the timeline. And, and when I draw a timeline, I've got to include the valuation date. That's important. Uh, that corresponds to this equation, that the present value is a 40 times an A angle 10 plus a 1,000 times V to the 10. Okay, so that's the example. I'm going to start with a timeline. What I encourage you to do on, you know, on these, you know, when you're thinking about this is to look at the, the uh, term that has the annuity symbol in it first. In other words, when I'm looking at that present value expression, I'm focusing my attention on the 40 times the A angle 10. So that means I'm going to be valuing 10 payments of 40. And so I'm going to have to have, you know, a bunch of little tick marks on my timeline because I have to put in 10 payments of 40. Now, it gives me a value uh, one, one period before the first of those 10 payments. So, and, and, you know, it's telling me it's a present value. So I'm thinking of choosing a time, uh, choosing a valuation date. I need to choose a valuation date there towards the left on the, on the timeline. So let, let's say that I pick that as my valuation date. So start with a valuation date and then focus on the 40 times the A angle 10. That's the 40 times A angle 10 is giving me a value of the 10 payments of 40 one period before the first payment. So that means the first payment of 40 must be where I've shown you that, that payment. That's the first of the 10 payments of 40. So I can put in the other 10 payments of 40. And now I am valuing the, uh, the, those 10 payments of 40 at, the, at that valuation date with that symbol 40 times an A angle 10. So now I need to account for the plus the 1,000 V to the 10th. So the question is, well, where do I put the 1,000 then? I've just got it set up there right now, but where does it go? And so the V to the 10th has given us an indication of where to put that. And so put the 1,000, and let me explain what, what I mean by that. Let's say that I wanted to put the 1,000 above the first payment of 40, where I put the little dotted line there. Well, if the 1,000 was there when I was valuing it at the valuation date, the 1,000 would have a, have a value. I'd need to discount it one period. And so the 1,000 would have a value of 1,000 times V. On the other hand, if I put the 1,000 above the second payment of 40, if I put the 1,000 there, I'd need to discount it two periods to get back to the uh, valuation date. So its value would be a 1,000 times V squared. And so when I see the 1,000 times V to the 10th, it tells me, oh, well, you need to put the 1,000 10 periods in front of the valuation date so that its value on the value, the value of that 1,000 on the valuation date would be a 1,000 times V to the 10th. So that's what my timeline would look like. So these are kind of neat problems to me, and, and it really, I think it really, you know, helps, helps you understand you know, not just the timelines, but it helps you understand the, uh, uh, the expressions and the symbols that we use. Let's look at another example. Let's draw the timeline, including the valuation date, that corresponds to this equation. AV equals 100 times 1 plus I to the 7th plus a 6 times S double dot angle 7. So I'll draw a timeline. I see that I'm going to have seven payments of six, so I need to put in enough tick marks there to have seven payments of six. The AV is, is representing it's an uh, accumulated value. I can kind of understand that because I see the S double dot angle seven. That's an accumulated up value of an annuity due. So being an accumulated value, I'm going to put the valuation date somewhere over to the right on the timeline. So I just pick a spot and I'll call the, the AV. That's, that's where my AV is at that valuation date. Once again, let's focus on the, the term in the expression that has the annuity symbol. In other words, let's look at the 6 times the S double dot angle 7. 6 times S double dot angle 7 is a value 
you're valuing seven payments of six one period after the last payment. And so the last payment of six must go one period before the valuation date. So now I'm valuing the payment. That's the last payment. So the valuation date is one period after the last payment of six. And so the seven payments of six, it, it, you know, now I know where the seven payments of six go. So now I'm valuing the seven payments of six one period after the last payment using that symbol S uh, six times uh, an S double dot angle seven. And now I've got to account for the 100 times the one plus I to the seventh. So the question is, well, where does the 100 go? So let's kind of go through the same logic that we did in the previous example. Let's say that I tried to put the 100 above the last payment of six, where I have that little dotted valuation date. If I had it there, when I valued that 100 at the valuation date, I would need to accumulate it one period, and that value would be just a 100 times a one plus I. I don't have that. I have a 100 times 1 plus i to the seventh. If I try to value, if I try to put the 100 above the, the, the second to last payment of six, well, then when I valued it at the valuation date, I need to accumulate it two periods, and so I'd have a 100 times 1 plus i squared. So that's kind of illustrating or, or you know, kind of giving me a hint on where I need to put the 100. I need to put the 100 seven periods before the valuation date and that's above the first payment of six, so that when I value that 100 at the valuation date, its value would be 100 times, I have to accumulate it seven periods, and I do that by multiplying the 100 times the one plus i to the seven. So uh, that's my answer. My uh, timeline would, would look like this. Finally, let's do one, one last example. Uh, this time, I wanna draw the timeline, include the valuation date that corresponds to this equation. So I've got an expression for an accumulated value that has two different, um, two, it has annuity symbols in both terms. Uh, and I'm told that I is the semi-annual effective interest rate and J is the annual effective interest rate. So once again, I draw a timeline with enough tick marks to represent, you know, to, to fill in all the payments. And my, what I would do in what I would do in this situation is um, I'm going to choose the time periods to be the, the the shorter of what's given to me here. One says uh, like I've got I as a semi-annual effective interest rate and J as an annual effective interest rate. I'm going to choose the time periods to be semi-annual periods then. Okay. I know it's an accumulated value, so I'll pick something over towards the right like it's an accumulated value. Hopefully I've picked a, 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 a evaluation date where I have enough room to fill everything in. So uh, we'll see what happens. Now, let's pick, just arbitrarily pick one of the two terms and focus on that. So for instance, let's pick the four times the S double dot angle five at rate I term. What is that valuing then? It's, it's five payments five because it, it, that I'm using the I, this is at rate I and I is a semi-annual in, effective interest rate. These are five semi-annual payments of four. And because it's an S double dot, I'm valuing those five semi-annual payments of four one period after the last payment of four. So I've got a semi-annual timeline here. Here, The units are semi-annual periods. Uh, I'm valuing it one semi-annual period after the last payment of four. So that means the last payment of four goes where I have it shown. And then I know where the other, uh, where all five of the payments of four go then. That's where the five payments of four uh, go. So uh, the, the picture that I have so far is valuing these five payments of four at the valuation date. And I, I would use the symbol four times an S double dot angle five at rate I to do that. So now the question is, well, let's account for the two times the S angle three at rate J. So the question is, well, I've got, I know I got three payments of two, so I'll put those up there. And the question is, where do I put those three payments of two? Now, uh, the S angle three means that, I'm, uh, that that's valuing those payments at the time of the last payment of, of, of let's say three payments of two at the time of the last payment of two or immediately after that last payment of two. So I know that the last payment of two goes exactly where my time, where my valuation date is because that's, uh, again, that's what the S angle three is representing is a value at the time of the last payment. And so the valuation date, I got the valuation date, uh, start with the valuation date, the last payment of two must go there. Now, the S angle three is at rate J, which means those three payments of two are actually annual payments of two. 
J's annual effective interest rate, the three payments of two are at uh, uh, are annual payments. And so uh, the that tells me where the other two payments of three go. They go annually before that. So um, the, the next payment of, or the, the middle payment of two goes where I have it shown. And then the, the, the first payment of two goes uh, above the second payment of four. All right, so hopefully you understand how I, uh, you know, the, the thought process to get to that. Uh, if, you know, technically that's probably not, you know, what, it's not really the answer I'm looking for. Uh, let's combine the payments. And if you combine the payments, you get four, six, four, six, four, two. And you're valuing those payments of four, six, four, six, four, two semi-annual payments that way at the, uh, at the time of the last payment with that expression. Okay, those are good exercises, I think, to help you, uh, you know, develop some intuition on how to use these symbols. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed these uh, examples. I think they're really good examples. If you didn't, you know, if you're still not getting some of the problems, I encourage you, strongly encourage you, go back and, and, and look at the videos again. Uh, all right, I'll see you in the next video.